Hello YouTubers, you're watching Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to draw a DNA strand in Adobe Illustrator. Now this was one that was requested by you guys so I really hope you enjoy this tutorial. So we've got our artboard to start, we're then going to select the ellipse tool and left click and hold shift to create a perfect circle. Just make sure that we have a fill color of black and then we're going to remove the stroke. Now next we're going to go up to view. Just make sure that we've got our smart guide selected. This will make the next bit a lot easier. So next we're going to select our pen tool and then if you hover over the edge of the circle you'll see the pink smart guides show you exactly where the halfway point is at the top. It will say anchor next to the pen icon. Single left click and then what we're going to do is you'll see here it's marking the vertical center point. So we want to just click, hold that and drag it out to create something like this. Now it will naturally want to complete that curve. So what we're going to do, make sure that it lines up here with the bottom and then just left click to complete. Now at the moment this uses a fill the same as a circle. However if we swap the fill and the stroke we should have something that looks like this. So next what we're going to do is select this, go up to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, go to object, transform, reflect along the horizontal axes and click OK and you should have this. Next we're going to select both of these and do the same again. Go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, object, transform, reflect, but now we're going to reflect along the vertical axes and click OK. And then holding shift we can drag this straight across to the right until it snaps in place here. You can see those smart guides are really coming in handy now. And then we can select the circle that we created at the beginning and we can delete that altogether. So hopefully you have something that looks like this. Now if you select the direct selection tool we can just drag over these points in the middle because actually if we zoom in these are still two points. You can't see them here because they're exactly on top of each other. But you've got this one half and then the other half. So if we drag over both of these and go up to Object, Path and Join, it will now join that into one complete path. And we're going to do the same again down the bottom here. Just drag over both of those anchor points, go to Object, Path, Join, and those two endpoints will now be joined. Now they look a little bit rough, they don't look particularly smooth, so if we select this and go over here, left click and hold and select the smooth tool. I'll just make sure that we select that line again. And then with the smooth tool, we can just drag and brush over and just smooth out that curve a little bit. The same here with the bottom one. You can see here it's a little bit pointy. We just want to smooth that out really gently, just so it's a bit smoother. Now for these end points here, these kind of come up and then they curl down a little bit. We don't really want that, so what I'm going to do is left click and hold on the pen tool, select add anchor point tool, and I'm going to click in here along the path. And then with the direct selection tool I can just click on these end points. I'm going to zoom in so you can see. You see where it dips here? So we want to get rid of that, so we can click on that end point and hit delete or backspace. So now we are left with this clean point here. And we can do the same for the bottom left. Select the direct selection tool, click on the end point and then hit delete. And it will stop right where we created that new anchor point. And we can do the same again for the other side. So we'll zoom in, select the add anchor point tool just click 
a little bit in from the edge before it starts to dip. Select the direct selection tool, just drag over that very end point and hit delete or backspace on both of them. So hopefully you should have something that looks like this. Now what I'm going to do is just select everything, go to the stroke palette and I'm just going to increase the weight. Let's go for about 20, I think. Next, we're going to select the line segment tool and just left click and hold shift to draw a straight vertical line. In fact, before I go any further, I'm just going to select over the whole DNA strand here and just go to object and group this together just so nothing moves out of place. So I can take this strand and I can then drag over everything so we've got the DNA strand here with the curves and then we've got the straight line. Now at the top, you'll see you've got your alignment options. If we click horizontal align center, if I just move it out of center so you can see what will happen. If I select them both and click horizontal align center, it will just make sure that they are both central to one another. And we can hold shift to drag that straight down. And we just want to drag these endpoints up. So if you hold the Alt key, it will drag in both directions. So I can click and drag and it will move straight up or I can hold Alt and it will increase the height of the line from the bottom as well as the top. Just want to make sure that we keep that straight there. What you can do is use the direct selection tool and just select over that anchor point if you are having any problems and just move it up like so with the arrow keys. So hopefully you should have something that looks like this. Now with the selection tool, what we can do next is we can click on this central line here and holding shift and alt, we'll click to drag out. Now we're holding shift to keep it perfectly straight and horizontal. And you'll see here, when I let go of the Alt key and then press the Alt key, this little arrow indicates that we will be creating a copy of the shape. So if we let go, and without touching anything, press Command D on the Mac or Control D on the PC, it will repeat that last action and keep pressing it until you go off the end. And we can just delete that last one. So now the next step is to select the direct selection tool. And we just want to click on these endpoints and just bring them up so they don't go outside of our DNA strand. So you can click. Remember, this is with the direct selection tool, just clicking on those endpoints and holding shift to drag straight down. It keeps these lines nice and straight. You'll see here those pink smart guides telling you that you are adjusting the line and that it is perfectly straight and vertical. Always really helpful. There you go. So you can do this really quickly. And we've got this last one here. We'll just bring that up a little bit. So now what we can do is ignoring the center one, if we select all of the other ones, so holding shift and then you can left click. And we want to go to object and group these together and then edit, copy, edit, paste in place and then object, transform, reflect along the vertical axes, similarly as we did before. And then hold shift and drag that all the way to the right. And the smart guides here, you'll see that the arrows are telling us that it's the same distance apart. So now we've effectively duplicated what was on the left on the right. I've just noticed one that's out of place here. So let's just nudge that down a touch. So you can see our DNA strand now coming together. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a copy of this. So by holding Alt and Shift, just create a copy and just move this up here. Now the reason being is because at the moment these stroke lines are all editable. I can go and adjust the width if I want to. I can make any final changes. 
I would recommend making any changes to the width of your lines now because after this next step it will be very difficult to quickly change the width. So make sure that you're happy with the width of your lines. In fact I might just increase mine a bit to let's say 30. And then I'm going to select the original curves that we created and I'm going to go to object and ungroup them. Then I'm going to select the top one, go to object, expand, make sure that fill and stroke are selected and click OK. And then I'm going to go to object, path and offset path. Tick the preview box and I'm going to create an offset of about 15. Click OK. And I'm going to turn this red just so you can see it. So we've got a nice red fill. And I'm going to bring that to the front as well actually. So object, arrange, bring to front just so it's on top of everything. Now we're going to select all of these vertical lines that we created. So make sure we select all of them. Go to object, expand. Again, leave fill and stroke selected. Click OK. Go to the Pathfinder palette. Click the top left one, which is Unite, to group those all together. And then go to Object, Compound Path, and Make, just to make sure that all these individual lines, although they aren't touching each other, they are recognized by Illustrator as one complete path. So now what we've done with the red line here and offsetting it, we're going to do that again with the bottom one. So select the bottom one, go to Object, Expand, Leave Fill and Stroke selected, click OK. Go to Object, Path, Offset Path. It will remember the 15 pixel offset that you did before. So you can just click OK. Make sure that you turn it red. And go to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. So now what we're going to do is select both of these red shapes by holding Shift. And with them both selected, just go to the Pathfinder palette, click the top left one, which is Unite. And then again, go to Object, Compound Path and Make. And then Object, Arrange, Bring to Front. Try that again there it wasn't bringing it to the front for some reason so what have we just done if i just move that out the way effectively what we've done is we've changed all of these lines into one complete path so that is effectively now one shape and we've also taken the original dna strand and we've offset it So we've created these thicker lines. And now there's still one. If I go into preview mode, you can see there's still one left inside here. With the direct selection tool, we can click on that to select it and just hit delete or backspace. There we go. To go into preview mode, it's command Y on the Mac or control Y on the PC. But we should now be left with these two elements. Now what we're going to do is go back up here Make sure that we select the curves again from here. And I'm going to go to Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste in Place, and then bring this down. Now I did increase the width from 20 to 30, so I must make sure that I do that. And we're just going to position that just out of the way for now. You'll see why in a moment. So. We have all our black vertical lines, we have our red curves, the red curves must be on top. Select both of these elements in the Pathfinder palette, select subtract or minus front, that's this one here, and you'll see it does this. And now when we move our shape in, you'll see it snaps in place there. We are left with the curves from our DNA strand and then the lines, the strands themselves 
with a nice gap between that line that is consistent around all of the edges. And there we go, we've created a DNA strand in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, I hope you really enjoyed this. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.